Thanks Sidekick for sponsoring this video. Today, I'm going to walk you through my exact process on how I plan, calendar block, organize my email and so much more. I'm going to take you along through my own personal calendar and show you the techniques I use, the time management principles I apply and overall how I try to make my planning system as efficient as possible. But before I get into the nitty gritty of my personal planning system, I really want to talk about the importance of ritualizing your planning habits. A new routine, namely a planning routine, can only be developed through positive reinforcement and by ensuring that your habits are a good support system to your busy life. In this context, a ritual is an act or series of acts regularly repeated in a set, precise manner, and ritualizing your planning is a good way to ensure you are incorporating it seamlessly into your routine, generating positive feedback, and overall making your organization and planning sessions a good experience that you look forward to in the future. Your ritual could simply mean brewing a nice cup of tea every time you sit down in front of your planner, or going to a quirky coffee shop to do your monthly review or monthly check-in. Independently of the actions you choose to incorporate into your self-made ritual, creating and following that ritual step-by-step -step is a great way to improve habit implementation and then making those habits joyful. Planning can be very boring if you look at it that way, but allowing yourself to maximize the utility and the experience of planning is what really differentiates someone who likes to plan from someone who doesn't like to plan. Okay, but anyway, let's jump to my own planning routine. So one of the things that has changed recently is my email organization system. I'm currently using the new Outlook for Mac and I've been enjoying it quite a lot. It's really good to manage multiple email addresses, which happens in my case, and it also allows you to view your email folders, email preview window and draft windows and your calendar in one place only. So basically, I start my day organizing my email. I've been having a hard time waking up early lately, as I'm currently taking around one hour to commute to work, and so I had to change my schedule to wake up while it's still dark outside, and I find that starting by managing my email is exactly the kind of task I need to feel awake and ready to start the day. This new Outlook also lets me manage multiple calendar accounts in one place only, so I can see exactly all of my meetings and time-blocked events. The only downside to Outlook right now is that it doesn't import tasks from Google Calendar, so I usually only consult Outlook more for events and knowing when to schedule meetings rather than micro-tasks. Now that I'm going back to work some days of the week again, staying home in other days of the week as well, and constantly transitioning between my work laptop and a personal laptop, I feel like it's fundamental for me to stay digital, as relying on a physical notebook that could easily just be left behind is not really efficient right now. So more than ever, I've been really relying on Google Calendar for time blocking and using my ABCD system. As I'm planning for the week, the first information I need to introduce are events or routines that are already locked in time and that I can't move around. So for instance, I time lock my morning routine, my morning walks, as well as lunch breaks. I call this basic blocking and all of my weekly calendar layout starts like this. After my basic blocking, I start inserting any fixed time events. And for me, these are meetings, voice or video conferences, consulting sessions, appointments and social events. This already gives me a big advance in understanding what's the time left in my calendar afterwards, and this is when I get an idea of how overwhelming or not my week is going to be. So after my routines are scheduled and timed events are scheduled as well, it's time to start playing around. So personally, this is the part of time blocking I found the most fun, because I'm actively managing my time and managing my projects. I'm telling myself what I should be doing at any given time, and I'm able to see at a glance how that translates into my own professional or personal projects. So to plan a specific task, whether it's personal or work-related, I then time block the required number of hours with a more abstract term. So for instance, I can block two hours of a day to write a report for work, to write a script for a video, or to run errands. 
And while these terms and these concepts are good at giving me an understanding of what kind of mindset I should be implementing at any given moment, they're terrible at giving me specific goals and guidance to look to, so I always overlap tasks on top of my events to give myself direction and to give me the guidance I need to know exactly what I should be accomplishing during that time. And as I'm doing my work, I check the tasks off my calendar, so I'm sure I'm not forgetting anything. Then every single month, I like to do a monthly check-in, and I usually do this on a notebook that acts as a journal. I usually take myself on a lunch date and do my monthly check-in during my lunch break. It's the most ritualized part of my planning routine, and because of it, it's also the part I enjoy the most. So I actually found the prompts I used somewhere on the internet, and I'm showing those here right now. And unfortunately, I can't link you to the exact website because I really don't remember where I found these. But I list the reflection points down in the description box so you can use them for your own monthly check-in. Regarding recurring tasks, I use Notion for all planning. I organize themed tasks for major projects in Notion like this main to-do list for my wedding, my YouTube content planner, my house renovation list, and so on. These are lists usually made for bigger projects that I tend to insert into a bigger dashboard that has all the information about that project that I actually need to know. I also keep my personal and professional goals highlighted in there, as well as trackers for reading, movies or series I watch, as well as video games I play. These trackers, as they're not that important, I tend to update on a monthly basis or every fortnight or so, so I'm not obsessed with keeping this information too updated. It's more of a fun thing for me to do, rather than something that's efficient or a part of my routine. We're all fans of efficiency in this channel, and these planning tools are all great examples of things that help us avoid unnecessary clutter in our daily lives. And the same thing happens to a lot of the information we find across the internet. A lot of it is unnecessary and filtered and doesn't have a lot of use. So right now, my news on productivity and lifestyle are all delivered with a simple and useful Sidekick email. I signed up for Sidekick for free to get a newsletter twice a week on my phone. So Sidekick writers search every corner of the internet for recommendations on the best ways to work, the best life habits to form, or the best ways to upgrade my living space. So if you're looking for tailored information and a way to save time on scrolling through your phone, Sidekick will be your best option. It's free, it takes 15 seconds to subscribe, and well, it's basically great. So click the link down below to get your free newsletter, and that's it. As simple as that. I really hope you've enjoyed today's video, and I'll see you next week. Bye guys!